What is going on YouTubers, Jay here from MJ Tech. Today with another projector unboxing and review. This one is called the WiMAX Go Advanced 300. And well, this projector was mainly designed for business purposes as it is flat like a laptop. And you can literally carry this anywhere you go. But what makes it even cooler is the fact that it is a true native 1080p projector for its size that's quite impressive and it has 600 ANSI lumens now this is quite high for the size of this particular projector and based on what I saw already on the measurements this right here the height of it is about one inch so that's quite cool and yes we have tested a lot of WiMAX projectors I believe this is my fourth projector we have had from short throws to cube style with amazing speakers to now going into the small tiny projectors so yes i've been holding this for quite a few weeks now and that's because i've been busy with other products out there but it is never too late especially when you love technology so initially this projector had a price of about eleven hundred dollars but now with coupons it has gone down to about seven or eight hundred dollars so comparing it to the competition out there, that's actually not too bad. These projectors, the Pico size I'm referring to, they come with about 300 to almost 500 lumens, but this one here goes above and beyond at 600 lumens as we know already. It says right here, beam into the future. And you guys can see this thing's very nicely wrapped. Check this out guys. Now, I really hope that there's a female tripod connector somewhere, but if not, it's okay. You can always go around that. And while this thing feels super solid in the hand, we do have here a protector that actually slides to the side and it is currently taped. Let's go ahead and remove that here right now. And this is like a copper color and check that out. It says ALPD laser projector, again with 600 lumens, native 1080p. This one also projects 16.7 million colors. And apparently when you flick this to the side, it turns on automatically. So I think that's actually the power button. And I can hear the fan already. Uh, now, according to what I read, uh, speaking about the fan, this one is super quiet at only 38 decibels approximately. So on the back side here, we have the regular HDMI port with a USB type A port as well. The 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and the USB C for charging. Now this one here gives you about one hour and a half approximately using the battery. So of course, we're going to be testing that later. We get here the manuals. This is the remote so it looks quite simple already we just have here the volume uh, rocker we get the home key the back key and the menu key very obvious for android and we get here the power button we get here a dedicated it looks like this is like a software uh, dedicated software button like sometimes we see for netflix and youtube and, and so on and so forth this one has a dedicated button for that and we get here a, um, a little mic button. This is so that you can speak directly into the remote and you can see the microphone right there. And on the back side here, I believe this slides out and we have the compartment for AAA batteries. Then we get here the power brick. Getting a better look here at the projector, not only this is a power button, but also when you move it to the side, you get the sensor for keystone and focus purposes. It does it automatically. If you guys observe here from the sides and pretty much all over the projector, we don't have any buttons dedicated for keystone and focus. So that's going to be done automatically. Second, we have a little kickstand here so that we can place the projector on a flat surface and it gives you that angle for projection. Also, we get here a battery LED indicator which is really, really cool. And it comes with dual speakers on the back, but they are only powered at two watts. So it is recommended that if you guys have something like a Bluetooth speaker 
or anything that you can connect directly into it because we have that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack then that would be very helpful so here guys without further ado let's jump to the garage test it out and see if the Wii Max Go Advance is worth it or not. Alrighty guys, so here we have the projector all set up and ready to go. I've been using it now for the past three days on and off. And I have to say that here in Florida, the temperatures are rising very, very fast. And this garage is so humid and hot that I am losing weight as I'm making this review. And it's not a joke. Anyways, this is the user interface for this particular projector. It is called Feng OS. And on the box and the instructions, it says Smart OS, which is Android based. That's the great news about it. And according to the company WeMax, they mentioned that they will release Android TV for this particular unit by August. So I have my fingers crossed. But so far, this system is not terrible if this is all you are relying on. So on the upper left hand side corner here, we get things like launcher and a launcher. You have Aptoy TV. It comes pre-installed already with Firefox. You get also YouTube here. Uh, this YouTube app I did download directly here from Aptoy TV. If we click on it, you can see that again, it is just something similar, not quite the same as Android TV. It is basically the Chinese version of it. So on here we can download hundreds of applications however i did try to download things like netflix and none of the apps work also i tried downloading uh, hbo max and i did have some difficulties so for that reason if you guys have something like the fire stick by amazon it is 100 percent recommended that you guys use it you're going to be much better off that way then the next tab you have on the upper side here is the user manual that's uh, self-explanatory you can read everything here directly from the projector that's very cool and we have focus now keep in mind that this projector does it automatically and it just did it again and then you can also customize it if you feel like it didn't do it correctly in which in my case nine out of ten times it does it correctly but if you feel like it didn't do it correctly then you can always fix it here manually and that's the beauty about this projector that you can do a lot of things manually to get it perfected to where you want to so that's it for the focus the next one we have is out of keystone correction and all of this is achieved by that sensor or camera whatever you want to call it that has on the front side that i showed you guys before this is all done by that little sensor which is really cool. So on here we have keystone correction as well. Uh, we can have all this done automatically. And like I said, it does a pretty good job automatically. The settings that you see right now were done by the projector itself. We get feedback and finally the shutdown button. On the lower left, we get here things like the network settings. And this is all working great. What I like about this system here, this UI is that it is very fast and responsive. Uh, we got things here like system and on here you can change your device's name in case you want a different let's say bluetooth name for it uh, you can change it right here that's really cool now we have this sensor which is quite amazing uh, this thing here detects if you're let's say walking by the projector and uh, it detects that there's motion then it'll them the uh, display and it actually turns off the light so that it doesn't damage your eye so right there you guys can see that I intentionally put my hand right in front of the projector and it took it again the light source went off and it says do not look directly at the light source and then you can either turn it off from here or simply exit I like to have it on it is great for kids let me tell you guys this thing works and that's amazing for the size of this projector so anyways we got things like language here so again this being android base it pretty much supports every language out there you can also reset it from here uh, so that's it for that we have energy saving okay so you can have it to where it turns off automatically after a certain time uh, from not using it we get security we get about now here from about device we go into system information you will see everything that we have on here so this device has the m logic t972h processor it comes with two gigabytes of ram 16 gigabytes of internal storage the wi-fi version and check this out we get bluetooth 5.0 and as i mentioned earlier we get android system 9.0 as you guys can see on the upper right hand side corner the 
resolution is 1920 by 1080 and so on and so forth so again very very cool little projector again i am amazed primarily with the quality that it is projecting on here as you guys can see from the camera and second the size this thing is super super portable uh, we get here settings like image and on here uh, when you are on battery only in which by the way i think i mentioned this before it only lasts about one hour and a half approximately you can only leave it on echo mode you don't have any other modes but when you have it plugged into the power source you can go into movie mode and office mode now movie mode kind of gives you that um, soft white type of look and i like it now office mode on the other hand gives you that bluish tint that I'm not really a fan of. So movie mode for me works perfectly. We get image parameters. So you can change it into movie mode. Uh, you can go into child mode, uh, chowy mode, so on and so forth. I like to keep it a standard. I think that's where it looks the best. So projection method, if you have this mounted in the ceiling, I'm not sure how because we don't have that tripod mount, Well, you can change the way the angle goes. So I have it just sitting on top of my uh, tool table or uh, workbench, whatever you want to call it, so I don't have to do any of that. We can zoom out. Uh, this is already at its maximum, so if I zoom out, going lower than 100%, you can see that it gets smaller. That's cool. Uh, we get, uh, again, screen focus, out of focus, I have it at on, um, auto correction calibration, if I click on here, then it'll go into the calibration mode. We can do this as many times as you want. And like I said, it does a pretty good job just even when you're starting it up, it does a pretty good job at getting things very well calibrated. We got things here like sound, and right now sound, we have it as cinema mode. Now for the sound, and I'm talking about the speakers, these are two, two watt speakers, so a total of four watts, don't expect magic to come out of them because that won't happen the speakers in my opinion they are mediocre and you won't get that enjoyment we're going to be listening to what they sound like in just a second so if you guys have a bluetooth speaker that's even better now you can also use it as a bluetooth speaker itself to where you use the built-in speakers of this particular projector as a uh, music device and that's kind of funny because they don't sound great, but having that option, I guess it helps. We get here things like inputs, and yes, I have that Fire Stick connected on there. But before that, I would like to show you here uh, this cast option. If you go into iOS projection right here, now all we have to do is on the iPhone, you go into screen mirroring, then you connect here to smart projector, as you guys can observe. So we are connecting to it right now. And it is uh, quite fast and, uh, and responsive. You guys can see right here that, again, the delay is very, very minimal. So that's very cool. Everything works as intended. I don't have any complaints here when it comes to this. Now, this is awesome. If you guys don't have something like the Fire Stick, you can use this to watch your movies and so on. So having that uh, very minimum latency definitely helps. Like I said, it looks pretty good and on the projector itself so that's awesome now that we know that that works so let's go ahead and stop the mirroring here and let's go back into the remaining of the user interface so after this uh, we are left with just the uh, Feng UI which again it gives you that app toy TV and I already show you guys this a little bit from here you can just download apps and do whatever so that's very cool but you are limited to what you can do and that's why i think that we max decided to come with a future update so that way you can get android tv instead as it is a lot better also if you do happen to download netflix into this device then you will not be able to play it at 1080p quality it'll be standard mode which is not the greatest as we know and that's because this projector is missing some inner components, um, inner features, I would call them, that doesn't allow Netflix to provide the full potential that it has uh, to offer. So for that reason, again, having Android TV would be much better. Something I didn't notice here about the inputs is that every time I tried to connect the Fire Stick, 
directly into the USB port of the projector. It wasn't providing enough power, even though I have the projector connected directly to the power source, I was not able to get power here for the Amazon Fire Stick. So what I had to do instead was use my external battery that I use around just for you know emergencies. I was able to use that to power on the fire stick and then the fire stick is connected to the HDMI port on the projector itself. And you guys can see that I am getting pretty much all the greatness that the Amazon fire stick has to offer. And the cool part about having the Amazon fire stick with this projector is that you can still use the same remote that came with the projector to move around the system. Um, of the fire sticks keep in mind that with the Wemax go advance if you do have light coming through the window or you have a door open where sunlight is coming in or even a light bulb it will affect the quality of the projection almost immediately right here inside of my garage I just turned on the light and you can see how it looks dramatically different and the light is not even that bright and in case you are curious, this is what the fan noise is on the WiMAX Go Advanced. Pretty quiet. And now to give you an example of what the speakers sound like, at least from a distance, right now I'm about maybe three feet away from the projector. Well, I have it at 100% volume, which is never recommended. You can blow these little speakers very easily. But I'm going to play this trailer, Top Gun trailer, so that way you get an idea of what it sounds like being about three feet away from it. So here we go. Right here you guys get the idea the speakers work the speakers you can definitely watch a movie with them don't take me wrong but if you want that full enjoyment trust me guys you might want to get a bluetooth speaker any external bluetooth speaker will sound 10 times better than the built-in speakers that come with the we max go advanced so that's it for that and like i said this projector comes pretty much ready for anything that you want to throw at it. Now, something I have to say is that when you're using the Amazon Fire Stick and you press on the home button, it'll take you to the main interface. So sometimes you might want to have the Amazon Fire Stick remote control in handy just in case you want to just go home, but on the Fire Stick side and not go home, meaning the user interface here that comes already with this particular projector. The only negative side that I see on this particular one is the fact that the speakers are not super loud, but you have to take into consideration that it is only a one inch thick projector. So with this being said, guys, I think that we have successfully here completed the unboxing and the review of the Wii Max Go Advanced 300. If you guys have any questions, you know exactly what to do. Just leave your comments below. Don't forget to like the video, share the video, comment on the video, and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss future videos like this. And I will see you guys on my next one.